Hello everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. At the end of the card, I'll give you an answer and an explanation for treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. So did you get this one right? This card's actually based loosely on a patient that I took care of. So let's take a look at the actual rhythm here and determine what it is. Even if you're completely new to this, just by looking at this six second strip, you already know that this is a very slow rhythm. The QRS complexes, there are three of them here. So the heart rate here is gonna be about 30. So again, already very bradycardic. Let's take a look at the actual waveforms though to make a diagnosis. So I'll first start by looking for any sort of semblance of P waves. Now I'm not seeing them in the spots where I would usually anticipate a P wave, as in right before the QRS complex. You can see they're nowhere to be found here. There are P waves though, believe it or not. Now a quick glance at this card, and you may not see them right off the bat, but they actually exist after the QRS complex and after, after the T wave. Because I'm seeing P waves here, but they're late, by default, this becomes a junctional rhythm. Now I know what you're gonna ask me, well, why isn't this IVR? Why isn't this idioventricular rhythm? Because the QRS complex looks so wide, and it is wide. But if you look very, very closely at the bottom of that QRS complex there, there's a small notch. And that notch would actually lead me to believe that there's some sort of intraventricular conduction delay which exists at baseline. But because there is a P wave here, but it exists late, this by default becomes a junctional rhythm. Idioventricular rhythms don't have a P wave at all. So my diagnosis for this for static cardiology would be junctional rhythm. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual scenario and we'll determine if this is stable or unstable. So we are dispatched to assist law enforcement for a near drowning. When the patient is extricated, we note that they're apneic, so they're not breathing, and they're unresponsive. We're able to feel a faint but slow carotid pulse. So for static cardiology, part of your treatment uh, is uh, based on whether or not you determine this patient is stable or unstable. For unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD. And CHAD, of course, stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration in mental status, and dyspnea. Now we already know that this patient is unresponsive, so they're altered, and they're apneic, so that counts toward dyspnea. Because this is a perfusing rhythm, we're not gonna be doing CPR. So my final diagnosis for static cardiology purposes would be an unstable junctional rhythm. Let's take a look at the treatment now. Just like with every other static cardiology card, I'm going to begin my treatment by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, 
BSI IV O2 monitor. Remember, because this patient is apneic, my next thing I'm going to mention is BBMing this patient, so providing positive pressure ventilations using a bag valve mask. Because they're bradycardic, per AHA guidelines, I should consider administering atropine one milligram IV push, but because they're unstable, the old saying is unstable gets the cables, I'm going to go ahead and default to electricity. Now, because this is a bradycardic rhythm, I'm going to choose to do transcutaneous pacing. So part of transcutaneous pacing or any electrical therapy that's administered to a patient who's alive, you should consider sedation, but because they're unresponsive, we can consider the sedation is already in place. I'm gonna turn on the pacer, select my rate, anywhere between 60 and 100 PPM or pulses per minute. I'm gonna increase my current until I get electrical capture. And then I'm going to check a mechanical pulse, a carotid pulse, to make sure that I have mechanical capture. Beyond this, if you just say rapid transport, I will give you full points for the card as an evaluator, but you could also say that I'm going to consider administering a vasopressor as well for continued rate and pressure control. Um, something like dopamine, epinephrine, or not, norepinephrine is perfectly appropriate here. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and check out my other static cardiology videos. Please feel free to make your own playlist of static cardiology cards to allow you to practice for your national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.